Still persistent crickets. Yep, that's what's happening to us. As we move through the year, remember when 2020 grows up and becomes a legal drinker and becomes 21. Watch out, folks. Very Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Rama, Lama, Ding Dong, Gista, Mithra, Krishna. And I hope everyone had a happy holiday. You know, another, and I hope we also had a cool Yule. Are we done yet? I always think about this time of year and how those are things that are in our face all the time and how it's been transitioned over into, well, we can see lots of it, the, the commercialness of it. And some of us try to hold dear to the actual privateness of it all, and it gets all washed away. And we forget there's another, there's an enemy coming to take it away. Aha. And boy, isn't that it living in the funny farm? So we have the uh, spirit of Christmas. We have the America, uh, American spirit giving up the ghost possibly here as we continue to fail to respond to our cricketism. As I keep saying, it's not a rule that I made up. It's a rule that I found interrupting the current neo-coronial cricketism to bring you behind the woodshed. This is Cricketude Busting Episode BTWRLM402. As we continue to move on, you know, before I forget, I will forget, uh, again, the broadcasters and the syndicators, be careful these broadcasts now. They're really starting to be take the YouTubes all over them. Uh, got another note that a, an ancient one's gotten pulled down. Uh, so I don't know where these people are, but uh, at any rate, they're, they're going through everything, and they're going to try to weed everybody out. So however you need to do it, protect your websites, protect your channels. I'm not here to reduce uh, your access. Whatever your thoughts are, and I've been able to ride under the radar for quite a while until this most recent censorship, this most recent purgings that come through to look more definitely into the point. Uh, they're completely, they don't need to be smart here. They are smart. They're not intelligent. The people that are doing this don't have to, they know they don't have much to meet. And so it was just a matter of time. They certainly don't understand what I'm talking about. And you won't if you only listen to a few minutes or you take a snippet here and there. Because, as I told you, this broadcast actually fits inside the exception to their community policies. Uh, and uh, they ought to, although they won't, they ought to make a particularized objection. And it's interesting because this unparticularized thing that's going on through the world, actually, it's throughout the system, and we're having to deal with that in a court case, uh, that the attorneys, the Bar Association members, think that they can come and whitewash things, and that's supposed to be good enough. And their bar buddy uh, judges uh, allow that. And so we have a, again, we've never seen, I don't think we've seen justice. I don't think it may be available to us, but well, some of you are out there wanting to see it and press it. And it takes a quite a quite a different number of uh, angles to try to corral that it can't happen. And then, as I've said before, you I think the most important point is it's not justice, it's embarrassment. They just have nowhere else to move. And so it, it does take a little bit of work, but... Uh, the other option is, I guess we can hear lots of people talking about, well, we're going to use our Second Amendment and defend ourselves. Well, you're not, but th that's what you think. And that's just another delusion. Again, uh, the, the insanity in the world uh, as we move in and through the upping up of the pressure if we agree to it. It's all about consent. It's all about how much you'll put up with. And they're, they're testing that to the nth an degree here. And I told you they were last year at this time, although I'm, I think I may have found out that I didn't, as I said last year, we were moving into hindsight, Operation Hindsight 2020. Would they, would you under, would, would, would they get passed through you, what you saw 20 years before, and do it to you some more and worse through medical martial law, or would you go stop it? And here we're at the end of the year, no one's really stopped it. No one, not many people are jumping in the proper way. I've showed you all the attorneys who do it the wrong way, and uh, they, again, I don't know what more to say. That they're pretty obvious where the you take the wrong step, you go down the wrong path, you're not going to get to your destination. You may think you're going down to your destination, but you're not getting there. And this is, is actually a lesson for us generally. We may have a knowledge, but we don't have a, a, a way, we don't understand how to properly apply it, and so we lose. But knowledge is not power. I just saw another representative in Florida say knowledge is power. And I returned to him, knowledge properly applied is power. It's not about standing there with all you know, contemplating your navel. It's about applying what you know. And when you have to engage, you'll find out that the war, there's a war out there uh, that we've allowed. Again, this is all about consent. In fact, some video links I'll send to you. 
you'll see people that are aware about this and they know the same thing I do from their perspective and they get a whole total different study path, study um, experience and, and experience in life. So there's a truth out there and we have to meet that. And if we don't, we're going to see more and more of the problems as we uh, move in. And to me, in a way, we're watching a potential diversion. I'm going to lead with this story. I'm not much interested in some of this, but the dy- how the st- how the chronology of how I come to this, these types of stories is kind of interesting to me. And I think that's more, if you will, the providential lesson for me on, on how this works. I'm going to do the punchline last, which is actually the first thing that happened in a video that was given to me. I think Gary L. sent it to me. And the very next day, this thing happens. And so I want to touch it just a bit. But I want us to look at it. To some people are saying this is a false flag and when they put a title on it. But I want us to see... If it is, I want us to look right through it. I don't want us to be lost in it, even if it has a. This could be multiply purposed. But if you, the punchline is, if you follow the money, you'll find out that maybe we are looking at the very thing that we've been talking about, that COVID brought in, that set up, that moves this agenda, this A2030, which I read to you on the air to I think two broadcasts, maybe three broadcasts worth of reading, the agenda 2030, which was ultimately you get three quarters of the way in, and it says. You're going to live in a, a as a debt slave to moneyed, uh, so-called moneyed people, and you're not likely going to do much to stop it. And boy, are they they proven that out in spades. But here, I was sent a video through a uh, suspect sky on the L B R Y L B E R Y Poundry, however you want to pronounce that website, that was from the Nashville explosion. It was the the security camera that just shows this bright white light uh, and the interesting thing about you hear an, an announcement that's per, that's saying don't get near this you got 15 minutes to get away it's the most interesting bomb i've ever heard uh, actually give warnings it certainly doesn't seem like a terrorist as far as the uh, mid eastern terrorist that we would be told that started this thing in 911 the the ghost in that machine uh, this is a whole different type of a thing so I just want to touch this lightly. I want us to understand that there's something that's not, like we can all see that it's not quite right. We can say it's a false flag. I think if we do that, we label it. We might mislabel it. This is actually a purposeful thing, and it's going to move an agenda, which I think has a, if you follow the money, we have the the end, the punchline is that someone in the world has seen through some data studies, they've found something out. I'm not, I'm not constrained to that construction and that design. So this, if I'm not constrained to that strict design that we will hear, when well, I'll reference here in a few in a few minutes, if you just open your mind up to the possibility of just moving the agenda along, this makes a lot. It starts to make a lot of sense. Whether it is or not, I'm not, I'm not in any position to know. I don't even know the area. I don't even know, but more I can find on the internet. But because of the chronology that we were looking at the punchline to the joke, if you will, right before. I don't mean hours before. That uh, this this explosion happens in Nashville, and it happens to be fitting a data uh, a construct of similarity across the country for destruction in cities. It was uh, too interesting for me to pass up. I wanted to pass this on. You can get the links here as we go through. A lot of these will be links. I just want you to have the information in the blogcaster. Uh, but if you go through and we, I didn't know where this thing was. I wanted to get a sense of what happened. I found an, uh, a link that says Explosion at Melting Pot, 166 Second Avenue, North Nashville. And the story here is uh, talking about where this explosion happens. And it shows a map. And so that got me, well, maybe I can find out a little bit more by looking at maps. And I read more stories the next day. You know, what's the point about this is that this this is a, a suggestion that these explosions, these destructions are happening in certain cities tied to certain things that the riots may be used as a cover is the point. And uh, these riots didn't happen but this summer, and that the same mechanism didn't happen. It happened a little different here, but they did have riots. And the more important thing is not the riots. The riots are a, a signal, but not the point. The RV that blew up in Nashville played an audio warning explosion was coming, folks. This is like, I don't know of any of any terrorist that does this. Uh, uh, as far as a what we call them, you know, the Middle Eastern one. I don't know of anybody who's uh, would be if even incited by an FBI that's ever done this before. Here, I'm going to make a bomb. I'm going to blow it up. Get away. I, intention saying that we don't want people to get hurt if, in their intention, which was interesting and important. The RV blew up in Nashville on Friday morning. Was playing a recording that warned it was going to explode. 
the recording said a potential bomb uh, a potential bomb would detonate within 15 minutes. I guess the guy wasn't too satisfied that he may have wired it correctly. I don't know. This is kind of like beyond me to even conceive that someone would even go through all this and then just happen to park it right there is the other clue I want you to consider. Why here? They say it's at the melting pot before. That's in a block of buildings. And that and then uh, searching down from the email I received from Gary L. relative to the theory that was being worked from, that we would find this in a particular place. I don't even know if the facts of this place met that standard of design. And yet I find out as I move through this, and this is what I'm going to do, give you the links. You can find out it is. The, the RV's blown up. This RV's in a particular spot, and I don't understand why it's there and why it ends up doing the damage it does, but it takes out the AT&T uh, hub, if you will, the connections, and yet, and we find out, and yet, it was nowhere near at least an obvious AT&T facility, unless there was one hidden. And now at and is a big, it's the backbone of the Internet. It's probably deep inside the military, and it provides all this, you know, the Internet was set up as a military tool. It was set up so that there was a, redu a massive redundancy for communication purposes. We're just able to ride on it. It's like you riding on your interstate highways. Those are not made for you. Those are made for the military. 1956. So you start seeing how this place is really wired. You start to see a little bit more of what I've been telling you about the military connection, the prerogative of the military in uh, what we, you know, they would hide underneath uh, what uh, national security. And some of this is relevant and needed in a country that defends itself against attacks. Uh, this is why I find so interesting this attack that's hit the hit the United States of America through a suggestion of a virus was not checked by any law, and we now have a governor admitting to a petition that says he's he's not subject to any law, and he put any in italics. So we've been talking about that as the Tennessee case. So very interesting what's coming through that nobody in the jurisdiction, 3,300 or so jurisdictions, not one jurisdiction stopped the attack, the suggested attack from from China. While everyone's focusing on Russia and they'll be told that Russia, you're going to see two news articles here in the near future that says they don't, they're just pointing their fingers outward and I want you to point it inward. I want you to see, in fact, I'll have an attorney here. I'll play, I will play his video. You're going to, if you listen with your ears to hear, you're going to hear how pointing at someone doesn't necessarily exonerate you from your own crime. In fact, you point at someone else to make everyone look at the other other guy, right? And so this is interesting. RV goes up. It's on Christmas Day. I don't want to get so much wrapped up in all these littler details and the correlations. They could be there. I want us to see that there this may be moving that agenda along. And I'll just name her now. Name her now. Catherine Austin Fitz had a had an insight. And I'm not totally sold it's the complete insight, but it is a far cry better analysis based on what I've been trying to show is happening in the world. And as we, as we see, in particular, the moneyed interest, if you're going to be a debt slave, and social slave is social credit is debt, social debt, you are going to have debt in the future to the society, shows you you're not in a free republic or in non-dependent. You are integrated already. If you haven't seen that, this is all toward that. Agenda 2030 is that. You are going to be a debt slave. I mean, in fact, I'm going down a track I hadn't thought about, but I'm going to repeat what I've said before. The credit is debt. Okay, so you are a debt slave underneath the Agenda 2030. You see the financial interests are all powerful, and that's how I told you the blockchain will be. You, you'll perfect it for these people. They'll pick it up, and then they'll, they will take you out with it, and you won't eventually be able to do much without it unless we step up and do our own, and that's the, what I've been hoping people would do. Uh, Cricket's on all that, too. However, uh, we have this thing called melting uh, melting pot. We, we have an address, 166, on a 2nd Street. It's, uh, didn't know anything about Nashville. Interestingly, that's where this governor in Tennessee is, so I'm not going to get conflate this thing into, into that relative to the lawsuit. Uh, will we read some more massive explosion? Uh, again, they keep talking about this at a, at a melting pot, which is a restaurant totally off the track of what uh, the agenda would be. So this is all kind of fitting in and how propaganda would be less uh, keeping you uh, not understanding, possibly understanding if this is a th prob probable theory, a possible one, and the potential one. Uh, you wouldn't even be focused on this. So I get into a video, uh, just looking at some videos, Nashville explosion caught on tape, and I notice a picture is from a church, and interesting connections too here. All the security cameras, they pick one from a church. And uh, they show in the right-hand side, eventually about 15 seconds in, 
they show the the explosion. Then I notice a building behind that explosion, and it looks like the Tower of the Eye of Sauron. And I said, what's that building? Because you're all I have in the first, like going at looking at 166, I see a satellite photo, and I just see a, a row of old of buildings that look kind of older, and it's on the waterfront. Very choice piece of uh, real estate as well here. And so it's on the waterfront of a river, and uh, it's there. There's a whole block of buildings in there. All the pictures you see apparently are these block of buildings. But additional pictures show quite a devastation. I didn't understand how that explosion did so much damage until I saw some pictures. And this thing contorted what appears to be older buildings and older industrial areas. Even a house, a live, it looked like a residential house, was in that area. So this immediately turned my mind to, if you will, urban urban renewal. If, uh, without knowing it, this is this is a different type of a, a way that they go through and they can take up property. Uh, and now they got you all locked down. All these businesses can't make a dime. They're just going to take what they're given. It's a way to make property real estate cheap for those around it that are have the designs. Uh, so as we work this through, you'll maybe see the correlation of the prop of the potential that Catherine Austin Fitz suggests. Although again, I will not confine. Her data, which is true to her data, to the fact that these guys will limit it to what she calls the opportunity zones that are handed to billionaires in order to invest in so they can write off their taxes. So this is a, a complete taxation, um, wealth-moving, wealth-destroying, profit-making machine of the moneyed people. And uh, so I, I think that has a very plausible way to go. And the point is we, don't, we can't even get lost in that. There's not much we're going to do about that. But if we can watch that happen, and it starts to happen in other places, you will know this, if you have any doubt, you will know this digital uh, social debt, monetary debt, lifestyle, the transformation of your society is way beyond what everybody thought it was. And they're now moving into that next step, as I said they would, that they've gone past uh, the telegraphing of the Tennessee governor. I have no, I'm not subject to any law, is what they're doing. They're moving around, they're figured out ways around the requirements, and I'll explain how this one may may work as we move along, and may work as we w move on uh, through the financing of this thing, and not taxing the corporations, which are now in control, if you will, and have their influence that you have not asserted, and maybe have found ineffectual anyway in this last election. As you see now, as I told you, the voting machines since way back in the 90s, I found the voting machine was tamperable. I found I knew that I knew, had dealt with the technology, not in a voting machine, but the technology for how you do all that was built into the machine for how you reprogram machines. And so I saw early on that these things were that way. And when they didn't give us the source code, I realized that the, as far as voting, the, the, the jig was up for, for my mind. If I had a question, then it was resolved into the negative where I said, OK, all this is a trap. Your voting registration is a trap. It sets a status. It doesn't do what you think it does. And they've got this whole thing federalized, and you don't even know that. And so this is my, again, my view of the, all this working out till today when it now moves into feds, fed to government in in bed with all the corporations that we might call fascism if this is World War II. It's worse than all that, that they're moving this thing internationally on a global scale. And you see that through globalization. Okay, so this is all outside of what most people understand to even learn to fight. And I've told you, I'll just get the answer real quick for this one. The way you fight it is you have to go know your laws and apply them because these people move outside the law. And that's the, the way you do that is because it's the black and white law right now is the last string of tangibility to objective basis that you can uh, use that can't be challenged. And so this is the key that I, I've been able to find, and it works. It, where we've applied this uh, rule, if you were this, this technique, this it's our need. It's a necessity now. It's what we were supposed to do anyway. The the fact of asserting law against adjective policy has what worked for us in uh, the Jefferson Mining District, and that's why I'm. It's not just that I talk about this. We're taking these ideas, and uh, again, the knowledge is not powerful. It's taking your knowledge and learning to apply it properly and put it someplace properly that it does work, if you will. It does the work that you need. There's your physics work. You know, energy applied to work. And we have you know, the work, you have the faith is like the energy, and the works is you applied the faith to the works, and it gives you it gives you the things you need. So we'll move this into, I look at this video, and I see the eye of Sauron in this building. I don't know what it is, so I gave you a link to, just a link just to get the picture, 
demonic eye of Sauron over Moscow stopped the Russian or stopped by Russian Orthodox Church. I found this connection in, very interesting relative to all the uh, people say that Russia's doing it. That a picture uh, was it's a drawing. It's it's a story about the Russian Orthodox Church, which is a very right now in this time of history is a very powerful organization, a very powerful institution that I think people need to pay attention to relative to what it's doing relative to the rest of what's going on in this realm where we, it looks like the demons are running over the world. I'm not, I don't want to just wholesale say that's who you follow. I'm saying there is a dynamic in the world that the Russian Orthodox Church plays a part in a, one interpretation of how this rolls out. In this article from Gnostic Warrior, you see the Eye of Sauron, and it looks just like this building I see in the video of the church. Well, I want to know, okay, where's the church? What's the vantage? I got a link for you, a map. Uh, I don't have it available to me. Didn't, nothing, none of my maps load, loaded up today. And so I have to kind of do this from memory as, as well. But the cross point church from which the security camera was looking at the Eye of Sora, the building of the Eye of Sora, uh, the tower is uh, literally across the, the river uh, and at a 45 degree angle. And you're looking, at, when you get this picture, uh, when you look at the video, you'll see that they're actually looking over the highway that cross, or a road that crosses over the river to look at this explosion, which is not at this Eye of Sauron building. Well, well, what is this Eye of Sauron building? Is interesting as I move move along. So move the, let's move the punchline forward. This brings up the video that I was sent just hours before this report came through relative to Catherine Otzen Fitz in, a, in an interview that was done. And she's explaining what they found relative to what the, the title of this is Planet Lockdown in an interview with Catherine Austin Fitz where she explains that uh, looking at, at the data, she found out that, and, and so other people have done this as well. So this is an integration of lots of points. I'm not going to say she's the only one that found this, but they did an additional study to find out that all the destruction to property was being done in enterprise zones just near in, 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 oh, and in cities that had Federal Reserve banks. And they were in the enterprise advancement zone, opportunity zones that were made right in the areas of these central, uh, these Federal Reserve banks. And they were done by certain policies and certain procedures. That's what her findings was. Then the explosion in Nashville, and the comment to me was there was none of these zones around. And I said, well, that doesn't mean that, because her data till then stated that this would happen, doesn't mean that it's now limited to that or would have been limited. In other words, this, if this plan by what she said would have held up exactly, Nashville would have had this type of a thing happen when the riots happened. This is happening much later. It doesn't have the riots for cover. So this brings on a new nuance. But she lays out the fact that these are, this is a, like a tax haven investment for billionaires to essentially destroy real estate around these, uh, the banks to reinstitute, rebuild to the new standard for the new normal. And so this got me thinking about what are we seeing? But before I do, I wanted to, before I got into that, I wanted, okay, well, well if she's right, where's, where, is there a Federal Reserve Bank in Nashville? Well, some of you probably live there and know that there apparently there is and has been. And so I found that very interesting. There is and has been. Okay, so let's go see where that's at. Well, it just so happens I couldn't identify it for a little while. I didn't know what building it was in. But I did find before where it is now what I looks like it's in. You'll have to correct me if I'm wrong. But the point is, is it's in right a block away. Uh, wherever the building is, I think I've identified it. And I'll tell you what that is in a second. Where it used to be is in the building that exploded. It used to be in the Federal Reserve building down where the 2nd Street is by what my, my research said. The Federal Reserve building used to be where the explosion happened. If that's a block away from the building that the Federal Reserve is in now, if my research, and I did a quick research, it wasn't in-depth, says that it is now. I thought it was in the another building. There's a financial building across the street from Commercial Street in that town. I thought the Federal Reserve was in there, but those are the financial institutions and other institutions. It's the We Work building. They have all these different names for these buildings. And so where do I find eventually the Federal Reserve Bank? And where's the Aya Sauron? The Aya Sauron building is the AT&T building. It's a skyscraper. And apparently the Federal Reserve Bank is in that building. And when you get the overview look and you look at the distance, it's about a block away from the AT&T building. My first question was, how did that explosion take out 
the AT&T building to substantially affect your AT&T's hub uh, and internet system and call center and all that. And so there, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. People were likening it now, and they're likening it to, uh, I don't even want to mention the name. I'll just say Oklahoma bombing, but that's not what happened here at all. So there's a, there's a theme, there's a meme going out real quick as, count, as propaganda to try and suge- be suggestive for people. Again, that's why I want to, I'm talking about, it. I want us to look through all that. That I'm still waiting for the pictures that show that, that this explosion actually affected this AT&T Eye of Sauron building. It has two towers on each side, and it has an, what looks to be an eye between them, bridging them. So that's why I call it the Eye of Sauron building. And then I can almost see where in the proper time, when you're looking from the church, if you could see the proper time, the sun may actually come up and set right through that thing if you're in the right line, maybe casting its eye on that church. I don't, I don't know. But anyway, that's off of what I could find. Uh, we find out that the AT&T building sits right there. The Federal Reserve is sitting in the AT&T building, but it's a block and a half away now. And so I started thinking, well, how did the AT&T, why did, how is AT&T infected whatsoever? Did the, uh, the the RV be placed over some vault in the street that it took out a, an underground hub? Was there a building we don't know about, that a facility of AT&T that it took out? Because when you see the devastation, it almost looks like the explosion is also directed. It really only went one direction in some regard. So I don't know. This is all a big vapor to me in just trying to put this together. But, you know, getting back and not worrying about all that, however someone knew to put that thing there, uh, old Federal Reserve Bank, It's not. An, it wasn't a question that it had been the old Federal Reserve. They haven't been there for a while. And put it right there, and then these people start saying, in an older area of town, this is an old building. These are a bunch of old buildings. They could very well be subject to urban renewal. I don't know. There's other names for these enterprise zones. And you see them in the codes, and you see them in the land use policies of every every state. Every county has them. And this is the, the, how they come after people, which is another interesting thing. But this explosion goes off. It's quite large. It's not something, it's not, not just a regular pipe boom. This is a, a real a deal, and it has some real damage. But then it doesn't affect the AT&T building, which has the Reserve Federal Reserve Bank in it. Really uh, intrigues me. If I remove what Catherine Austin Fitz says in the uh, interview, that it was limited, there was a line literally drawn, and the riots beat up and burnt down all the buildings on one uh, on that line, and on that side, and that was all slated for this enterprise zone, and people were moving in to take those uh, those small pe- those small businesses out because they were they couldn't function now underneath the COVID, right? Everyone can't make any money, but the money has money, so it comes in, and it goes to rebuild. What what is it going to rebuild to? It's going to rebuild into the new transformed globalization standard, isn't it? Now we're, in my mind, it was what AT&T became important. Whether or not the building's affected, this looks like could be covered, just like Catherine Austin Fitz is saying, to move in and redo certain areas wrapped around the moneyed interest. It's a block away from the AT&T building, which is their same claiming has gotten hurt somehow, Right where the financial interest, which the ATT is a backbone to, to do what? Well, the, the data, the big data. They're in control of all the data. They're in control of future social credit, of your your what's the your financial monies at all, your money at all, your banks, your access. All the digital stuff is going to be going through this. But what do they need there now? What have you all been fighting? What have you are thinking you're fighting or having complaints about coming in on technology? What have you been saying? that you hate, you don't like it, and there's no safety considerations. It's unsurprisingly like vaccines. They don't do all that study, and no one understands how to even address this. But at any rate, let's get past all that, what I've been trying to explain to you all. Uh, let's look at this little explosion and say, wow, you know, maybe AT&T, it, it did or didn't get hit. It didn't get hit. looked like the building didn't get taken out. Certainly the infrastructure would have been more fortified than that. AT&T backbones military. It's going to be fortified. The stuff is not going to be accessible. Not the stuff for the military or the moneyed interest. That's the national security. And so wh- whatever happens here to that building, I don't know. But the infrastructure's not up to speed, is it? The infrastructure has fights coming against it if it tries to go to the local the local governments. What can't the, ju- the local governments deal with is a declaration of an emergency and federal funding to bring the system back online. And when they have that opportunity, it goes past all regulation and it'll be put back online 
uh, for the necessity and the, uh, the national security that it is, and it will not need any permission to actually update that whole system to be able to take on the next, uh, the next iteration of data acquisition. And so my thought here is Catherine Austin Fitz may be onto something. It's not limited to how she said it was to limit uh, to zones, but it is. They are now effectuating the ability to build an infrastructure and move around any limit in the limitations. And they're again using necessity to do so, like I told you they would here coming into 20, uh, 2019, a year ago. All right. So it's like a year and, and two days more, and we would be last year. I'm telling you this moving uh, the agenda of, of 9-11 forward. And so I gave you a map. Uh, hopefully your maps will show up. Put it on, um, when you look at it, put it on um, uh, on satellite. And you can see these buildings are right there. As I said, the, the Eye of Sauron building, the AT&T building, is facing right up the river, uh, across the river to that church, just like it looks like in the picture. So I think I have the orientation correct. It's a block away across two streets, but this area is only width of blocks. In other words, they could destroy, do an urban renewal project and clear out that whole riverfront and rebuild and update and have a center for the muddied interests with the technology they need up to date. And I don't think that there's going to be a restriction on all that. Uh, moving in, uh, as I said that, okay, so how do they do that? They get a declaration of an emergency. The federal funds come in. It, it bypasses just about, I think, everything they need to do to rebuild the, the infrastructure for national security. And guess what? Tennessee governor asked Trump for emergency declaration following the national explosion. One explosion. It could have been a grain elevator in Texas, but they're going to get a national disaster out of this thing. Why? And so I'm not saying I know. I know nothing here more than to look. Why am I asking about this? Because you need to see if this is what's going down. We need to see that. Because this is in earnest what's going on, and they don't care about destroying property, taking people out, destroying their property and their value and their lives to get what they want. It's the future we want, and it wasn't we isn't you. It's them. And so we may be seeing a little bit more on this. I don't know. I, My view is because of the way I come through, I believe what I'm telling you, Catherine Austin Fitz did a great service to identify her study to everybody, and then we can take it from there and say, okay, well, there's a plan. It looks like it's consistent. It, these disasters only happen around a, a Nash, a Federal Reserve Banks. Nashville was the next one. They didn't figure out how – they weren't so smart there in Nashville to figure out how they were going to get their imp, 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 upgraded uh, in, infrastructure for 5G. And I think they just figured that out. And now I want you to know this. notice this. If this is the case, notice how far ahead these people play. And notice what they're willing to do. And we're not a safe people about this. When you have a governor in that state, and this particularly was interesting about this state, remember David Toulis and I, tntrafficticket.us is where you go get the complaint. This is that, the, the Tennessee court case that's suing the governor for fraud, a fraudulent use of a public health crisis to bring COVID-19, and they just answered in a motion to dismiss, which means in law, in the legal procedure, procedures, they've admitted to the petition. And what they're saying is, doesn't matter about the petition. You've made some technical errors that we're going to claim are there, whether they're there or not. They make the claim. And so it doesn't matter that we've harmed you irreparably. In fact, that you've said that we've harmed everybody. We're not going, you're, you don't have standing to even complain about how we harmed you. And this is the mentality that you're dealing with. Now, that's not a surprise to me, for sure. That's what making records are about. That's what starting to call out all the people that are allowing this to go shows us how far behind the game we are that we really have to bring our A grade game to that stop. These people are well-organized machines somehow. I don't know how they all got here, but they're all here, and they're doing their thing all at the right time. So I don't know about all you folks that know, know timing and structures and this and that. You keep playing your numbers games. Put your pencils down, your calculators down. Know you were right, and now go do something with your knowledge to shut it down. You're, you're not, this is not a, a easy fix at all, and it's going to take everybody on the oars, if you will. You're in a ship of state whether you want to acknowledge it or not, and that, sh that ship is being sent over, over a falls, and we better get every, or, every uh, man and woman on the oars going the other way to bring us back into safe waters. You all want to talk about being an admiralty? Yeah, you're in the boat going over the edge. This is international law. It's in insurance. It's in all this stuff that has nothing to do with law. And yet there's every law to stop it if you were to understand that. Now, this other thing, well, one more point about this emergency, which I found interesting. There was a, a Federal Aviation Administration, NOTAM, notice to airmen, a notice 
and it called that space, that airspace, about a 1.5 miles around it to be a, a national security interest, and they told you that you you may get shot, and you may suffer a deadly price for going in there. Now, why would they really do that? That's uh, pretty extreme, but then there it was. They may use deadly force against airborne aircraft if it is determined that the aircraft poses an imminent security threat. Well, folks, you're, you're a domestic terrorist, aren't you? 9-11 said that. So be... Well, I guess pilots, be careful. Understand, go read your notans for Nashville. <laughs> uh, these people are really doing some interesting things here. Why are they so protected? Why didn't you hear them do this for the for the fertilizer company blew up in Texas a few years ago? So, and there's other other things. They're just not treated equally. So, I just wanted to, this is my only interest, is how the punchline was that uh, Gary L. sends me Catherine Austin Fitz's video, and then a few hours, if you will, a few hours later, this thing happens in Nashville, and she's identifying that maybe there's a reason, and it just so happens this happens to be a Federal Reserve town, just like she said. And so I'd like you to see how you can start pulling this together, and I, I believe that more than any other idea, more than a false flag. I don't even know if that even fits this thing. I guess it could be conformed. I don't even care that they think that they might go after the so-called conservative or whatever group, new new group that is is against the the government that the FBI wants to call out. That's all, that's all fluff and smoke. If it's a false flag, then you know it's smoke anyway. But if you get buried in all that and you're not looking in the right direction, they move the agenda along forward. And you don't do what I'm showing you that you need to do to circumvent all this would be to start being invading your system and, and get weed these people out in, in ways... See, the most of the population doesn't understand it. So that's why I've been telling you the record is, is all, all important at this point to substantiate beyond your opinion the problem. And this is why I have trouble with a lot of people that want to move what they're saying forward without setting the basis. They just come in, they want to talk like a patriot. Everyone wants to talk like a patriot. Not a pirate, but you know, it sounds close sometimes. A patriot, and then you think you're doing something, and you're not. You're just actually folding. You're you're molding yourself to what the occupier wants. And this is the danger. This is what's going on. I've noticed some pa what, patriot prayer guy. Uh, I don't I don't see any knowledge in the guy. He's got lots of people fired up. I see no knowledge. Boy, he's a gadfly around the country, though. Uh, my 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 antenna, my warning s signs are up all over for that guy. He might be the greatest guy in the world, but. The way he's going about it and the way that people execute upon their, their disgruntlement is not helpful, not helpful in the least. So we have this thing, immediately the governor asks for, a bomb goes off and the governor asks for, for aid from the federal government. I don't know why you'd want to do that unless you have this other agenda to go ahead and have AT&T be paid for all the infrastructure that the digital world needs and the financial world needs right a block away from the financial world. And yet, so we got, they asked, tr Trump's being asked for something else, right as he's coming to the end of the term. Uh, I don't, again, we'll, we'll touch a little bit on, on that end of term thing and what's coming down. Interesting dynamic since last week that I, uh, I, I want to mention. But here, we have a decision, uh, Trump can also make another decision. And Project Veritas, I want to, this has been, I don't talk about this too much, but this is a very important issue and matter. There should be a whole lot more pressure on this. Uh, if you intend to be a free, a peak, uh, someone who speaks the truth and expect to be protected, this is a guy, whether you like him or not, that needs to, to see justice ahead of time. And uh, Project Veritas releases audio in, of Assange warning U.S. government of damaging leak of classified information. Quote, in case any individuals who haven't been warned, they should be warned. Was a recording, we're told, between Assange and WikiLeaks calling a U.S. attorney the only one that would respond to him when he called the other State Department and other things, to uh, inquire upon Assange telling uh, the United States government that they were about to see a release of classified information that could be, pe be putting people in harm. And so this starts to shed a different light a bit, not that I even needed this, but for those that think that maybe Julian Assange is like the criminal element trying to bring the United States down, Given he was a journalism, a journalistic position, and he received information like good journalists used to, 
and then spoke truthfully about it, this shows another element that says that this guy was looking out for people, and maybe, not maybe, he doesn't deserve the treatment that he's getting. Then we would have to ask why is he getting that treatment, that Julian Assange needs support in the idea, if you were going to ask Trump to give money to Nashville to put 5G and whatever all else infrastructure they want under now the color of national security, maybe a notice or two from you all should be going to Trump, say, get rid of uh, the, remove Assange from this injustice and anybody else like him. I just want to leave it there. There's so much to go through on that. I don't want to focus on everybody that's been harmed, the injustice generally in the world. But this is a particularly sensitive type of position here. If you're going to ask for Trump for something, maybe it's to relieve innocent people of the attack that governments do against them when all they're trying to do is tell all of us what's up. And they're attempting within that that corrupt structure to still protect people. Now, I still have a question about this, how he got, not necessarily the how he got it, but that they're in a position of saying what is, is security and what isn't. But there's a thing behind the backgrounds, I understand, that works that through. There's an understanding about how that works. So there's a balance and negotiation that goes on. But this issue was someone had who worked for WikiLeaks had taken a gigantic uh, cable streams from intelligence sources and had locked it onto the Internet underneath a code key that was about to give up those code keys, not publish them, just give code keys so that everyone can access them. And Julian Assange was on, is on record, apparently, here with Project Veritas's recording being made public. And he was trying to warn the government. Notwithstanding what they want to do to expose corruption, he didn't want people to be hurt. does not sound like someone who's trying to destroy the United States in that regard. But that, again, is a lot, us allowing the attorneys to lie. As I went through all that between the problem in the, in the UK case relative to the attorneys that were and the solicitors over there essentially working hand in hand, and the things that they hadn't done that were available to everybody to do, and not not being argued. So moving moving into the the thing I want to talk about of Trump uh, being asked money now to to build up Nashville's uh, 5G, I suppose, or whatever infrastructure to bring on the world the new world order. Uh, now based in this uh, this bomb that goes off, don't just clean up the trees and patch the buildings. No, we're gonna we're gonna make a big national emergency about this in order to get more money in a town that's got more money than they knew or know what to do with. Uh, so, but getting back over to this dynamic about this electoral college, I want to touch base with a little bit here. I talked with last week. Senator-elect Tommy Tuberville uh, defies Mitch McConnell opens door to electoral college challenge in Senate. Now, this is appearing because another story pops up that says Mitch McConnell received donations from voting machine company lobbyists before blocking election security bills. This put an interesting twist on what I was talking about the video was showing and who he might have been talking about, McConnell was talking about in the Senate, and what they, th- what it sounded like they might be doing. What it, there's a politics going on here, and Mc, McConnell might be 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 caught, but that this invites this other Tommy Tuberville to bring up the challenge is a very interesting dynamic as well. And so I'm, uh, like I said, let's watch this. I'm not, I don't have, as I said before, I don't have high. Uh, high uh, regard for any of this going on. It's just an interesting thing to see how the constitutional parameters are working. They are used, being used, even if it is for special interest within the system. But the fact that we see what's exuding to the top is the abject corruption in the system. That if you focus on just the elections, you're, you're going to miss more of what I've been talking about behind the woodshed. This is a bigger problem. We really need... A just gobs and gobs of people to be inter, intersecting on this uh, from all different angles to scare them up, if you will, and to but do it and not in a way just for the beating the brush to actually do some substantial record making so people can hopefully be shaken from their their slumber even so, and despite their prejudice in their mind, their mind if we can call it mind control, it's easy to have happen to anybody if you just if, that, if your one source of information is all you have your myopic view of the world is not not comprehensive enough to see more. So so I said we've got to be gentle with ourselves. We're only products of what we've been absorbing and, and agreeing with, uh, like your nutrition. But Mitch McConnell received donations of Dominion voting systems and shut down two election integrity bills in 2020. So we see the uh, inside effort going on that even so, what 
Donald McConnell was saying, uh, say, sure, still could be working with someone like a Tuberville stepping up, saying, we're not going to let this go to rest. And that politically is an interesting identi- uh, identi- um, dynamic, because wouldn't that then protect those so-called donations anyway? And Mc- McConnell is not shown to be contrary to those people that were foreign and paying him. It's not him doing this, is it? And so we'll see. I just I'm interested in the dyna- in the in the the dynamic of this, how this how the constitutionally this is supposed to work out. As I said, when you identify they're having to do certain things that way, uh, then we now know it's still workable, and we can assert that in a comparison. And that's part of, uh, in fact, that just happened in another uh, another motion to the court uh, to show. That, excuse me, not a motion. It was a in the, uh, collateral attack on the uh, on the principles that are of, of justice, a, a judicial branch that are being being used in another in a state, and challenging that they give the bar association bar associations special interest inside the rules of the state. And so you compare they do that for the special interest. How about if you do this one over here that we're bringing to the people, for the people, the ones you have the trust obligation to. So it starts to become, when I tell you about these things and these things you have to think about, this is from experience, not not from me just so thinking that I'm, I'm some, some strategic genius at all. No, this is some hard-fought, hard-won knowledge that turns into having to apply it because this there is a corru- uh, beyond a corruption. This is a crimes against mankind going on right in front of our face. And you say, again, the, the explosion to me is just the extent at which they don't care They care a little bit because they told people to get out the way, and then they blew the place up. They certainly don't care about all those people that are going to lose their businesses if the pressure from the government now comes in to clean that place out. And you see exactly how they start doing some of the, I think, I can't remember what Catherine Austin Fitz calls it. There's there's a a term for this, a a scorched earth maybe, uh, uh, techniques. And so we just watch in amazement as the arsonists come through and, destroy our lives and that's not a republic that you're keeping now i want to touch something else relative to the injustice here we're talking going against the judiciary of a state relative to it not being able to actually give equity do justice and not just as an opinion you you, you have to get involved to show the violations as you move you highlight you you document those and then you bring them back as the very violations that they are and you say, okay, here, here's what you're going, you're allowing. You're claiming these authorities over here, but you're allowing this. Reconcile that. And we, you can laugh, but the point is, is now they've they put put on challenge where no one else has ever put them on challenge. And if we could do this across the country, I think the ire of the people will be start spoken in a very intelligent way. And we aren't going to be putting up with it in order to force have them force us to blame us for going to violence is the other thing this is what this rv thing represents as well but let me play quickly here a statement it's only about three minutes from someone named uh, someone turned said well listen to this guy it's about this election thing uh, lynn wood an attorney and i i don't know how much i want to preface on this but i want to explain listen to if you have an insight of Corruption in the system, and I don't mean just like, oh, yeah, the system's corrupt, but I mean you have these detailed knowledge in you, whether or not you ever say it to anybody. I want you to listen to what this, what Linwood says here, and how forthright he sounds, but also how he points to other entities, other organizations, other countries, causing, or another country, causing what he finds in his state to be a problem. And then I want you to, as you're, as it, and I guess this is as far as I'll set this up, I want you to consider as he's saying that, the people that he claims he believes are influenced, and I don't hear him bringing any proof, which is another problem. The people that he claims of influence and what his relationship are to those people. And whether or not, when I tell you that there's a challenge going on in a different state relative to the inability of the group of people that he's a member with, to do justice, whether or not we're not watching somebody who's actually a distractor. And you'll focus in on, oh, the China virus, or the Russia gate or whatever it is outside of what the problem really is, which is internal. The cancer is internal, the enemy within. 
So let me play this uh, this video. That's just the audio to you. And let's see if we can find listen for a couple of things. Attorney Lynn Wood claims courts are dismissing evidence of election fraud because the judges are compromised or threatened. He also alleges that the Chinese Communist Party is ultimately behind it. Attorney Lynn Wood sat down with Crossroads' Joshua Phillip to talk about the 2020 U.S. election. Wood has filed two lawsuits in his hometown of Georgia against alleged election fraud. We could resolve the question of the legitimacy of this election within a matter of a few short days, but it's taken weeks. Why? It's not one judge has looked at the merits of the mountain of evidence presented to the courts about the election fraud. We're not talking about an affidavit or two. We're talking about thousands, tens of thousands of affidavits. We're talking about authenticated videos of fraud. Wood says he believes it's because the Chinese Communist Party has infiltrated the United States from local to federal governments and the judicial courts. He said he thinks many individuals are compromised or have been threatened. I think they've done it over the course of the last two or three decades, just like they've said they would, just the way communism works. I believe that we have been infiltrated by ideology, by corruption, Chinese money. Take a look at Georgia. It's uh, overflowing in our state government with people connected to Chinese money or even by blackmail. These are the tactics of the Communist Party in China. So they are, in effect, I believe, almost in control of people that are running our country. Wood said the U.S. has been attacked twice by the CCP in 2020, first by intentionally letting the CCP virus spread throughout the world and second by influencing the election. The director of national intelligence said at the beginning of December that China, Russia, and Iran interfered in the U.S. election. Attorney Sidney Powell also included affidavits in her lawsuits against election fraud that contain evidence of China's involvement. He said now is the time for Americans to unite, and he said that despite the obstructions and the courts dismissing many of the lawsuits, he doesn't believe people have given up hope. Give it a stop right there. Just cut this off. Did you hear... The problem with what he's saying, right off the bat, he talks about it's not one affidavit, it's 10,000. What's wrong with that? One affidavit is just as valuable as evidence and proof of a fact. In fact, it is the evidence uh, to prove a case and to to promote a case and to prevail in a case as 10,000. So he's diminishing your voice by saying that. He's also saying this is the tactics of the Communist Party, and he says this is over to China. What, what is he a member of but a bar association? Have they been around more than two decades? Have they been in places of the United States of America in control of the law in order, instead as supposed to be the bulwark against encroachment that should have stopped this? Does he mention that they're, the China, he's saying that China is the only donators? Do you think that if they're receptive of bribes that maybe there's others? How about, he says, it's a a promotion of ideology. Let me remind you, go to tntrafficticket.us, get the petition, and get down in the the defenses, the anticipatory defenses section, and look and see whether or not the Bar Association has an ideology they're promoting in proof, not an opinion, written right in their own documents, which you've actually heard me read years and years ago behind the woodshed, as a promoting a foreign ideology ends up being a a religion. And when you listen to this with a comprehensive understanding of all the places that an attack can come from, the group of people that he's involved in, that he's trying to point some members out without identifying who, are actually the same methodologies that are being have been used by the Bar Association itself. Why we don't have the justice that if we go to equity that equity demands. And when you challenge that, it seems to fall on deaf ears. So I'm very skeptical that that I've heard this guy being promoted around. People do need to stand up. But I don't know that it's actually to promote what he has to say and point the finger out to China. Because every jurisdiction relative to China, and not just the election, but more to the point, let's say go to COVID, Every jurisdiction had the in the in the judicial branch had the re- obligation 
to make sure the law was being followed, and none did, was not China. Again, you point that someone paying the one judge being bribed or the attorney being bribed is not really the problem. It's the one taking the bribe that's the problem. Now, he may be pointing us a truth that is throughout Georgia. But to me, that's not a surprise when you understand the Bar Association is almost wired for that. They are their own ideology, promoting their own global ideology, and they're global. And as you can identify in the principles of equity, you will find out that none of this should have been moved forward like it has. None of it should have been stalled. Every attorney has been doing the wrong complaints. He said, you see, the article says he's filed two, two lawsuits. Were they correct? You've heard, heard me discuss how every COVID uh, lawsuit's been incorrect. Well, except for the one in Tennessee at this point, which does what? All it does is it says, court, enjoin the lawless action of the governor and the public health official until they can comply with the law. That's all that lawsuit actually says. And when you realize that it's taken all this, what, what, over, over three months now to not get the answer proper in the law, you have to realize it's not, China has nothing to do with the local jurisdiction, the local judges. Those are all bought and paid for in their own ideology. They're bought and paid for by their own lack of adherence to the thing they promised to be the trustee of the people. And when we have a, a root cause like this, and this guy to me seems more like a promoter, someone that points the finger to someone else so that you don't look at them, I start having a real problem with that, but I won't go too much further because it doesn't matter to me. I'm not there. It's just indicative of how many places we can be as people to stop that. It's clear that the, ju the judiciaries of every state have been allowing what appears to be fraud. When you hear that fraud cannot get a hearing in minutes, you have to understand you have a serious, serious problem. Because fraud's supposed to vitiate everything. It's supposed to have no air to breathe. And yet you watch it, you watch it flourish. The conflagration of fraud in this country that we've allowed as people is terrifying in a way, if I can sit, go there without getting too wrapped up in the emotional side. It's just one of those things you realize until people could come to terms with this. We're not changing the direction, the course of where the the momentum has been brought when it they're utilizing that obligation that the people had of, to protect themselves from the destruction of the republic, if you will. There lots of republics in the world, but this one in particular this one that recognizes property and recognizes the rights of pertinent property as the first thing to protect is secured by black and white, not our opinion, and not only as, oh, I have you're supposed to secure, secure to me. There's a process to expose that. And so we, when you abandon the law, the black and white, at the last moment here, you're going to have no basis from which there is an objective basis for everybody else to watch that. And if, if the society, and here's the other side of this, which I kind of shrug my shoulders a bit, if the republic was meant to be kept by the people and they don't choose to keep it, then I don't know what more to say, actually. It's not going to happen by the force of a gun, in my mind, because that's not moving forward. That's just stepping back and starting the process of, of the corruption of violence over again. So that requires an integration of people in each, like I've said, you just find something that really is not you can't tolerate that needs to be fixed and just focus there for what you how you know what you know you'll learn more you'll learn really quickly there's people around i'm sure around more even more than myself that may offer some some insight i would caution you to take all every every insight with a grain of salt take the wise counsel don't don't just take all counsel and that's why i try to show you the the black and white that you can use and hope that you study that and so you start getting more fortified make it more comfortable to you. You're always going to be uncomfortable. I don't think anybody that I know loves to fight at all, but we're in a battle and that's just the way it works. And I was down, uh, just to, I was going to talk too much here, but went back to the post office, had to drop down our mining mining papers. I was uh, 
kind of like a, the fish eye wide view. I opened the door to the post office and it happened to be Christmas presents, I suppose. The line was extremely long, longer than I've ever seen it. It did move really, really fast, so that was really cool. But to look, have all the faces look at me with masks on, I just was quite an astonishing view. I was the only one walking in there without a mask. Shows us the work that we have as a society. And on the other hand, I was, I've been visiting with some people. There has been no masks in some places. So there's a very, there's a, forget the Civil War. They've got us split pretty well. And we're going to have our, our, our fight there amongst ourselves, which is we need to be able to stop. So we'll each have our, our strength and our skills to, to tone that down. We need to get all, like I said, push the wagon back up the wagon that we were supposed to have on the road that was built for, for, for us to go and to make better that condition. We need to get there. And so move on here. Uh, as I've been saying, more proof relative to now COVID. The thing that Trump could have shut down all that can still do it, but he won't because it's all part of the plan. It's all part of moving forward. And I don't know what to say. Just uh, dismay uh, that it continues and that people resist uh, resist really kind of settling down. That You think that saying resist is resist and it's not. But today we're forced to admit that COVID-19 does not exist. It's a story uh, relevant to a system of conscious play, having a video with uh, of a Gemma O'Doherty, and if anybody has a connection to her, they won't respond to me. John Waters, they won't respond to me. I tried to explain, focus in on this thing I've been telling you behind what she had to do. Uh, they have all the they have all the information that they need, and so now they have one more part. I was telling you that there there is no isolate. Now, now they have a league. I didn't couldn't find the document. Anybody who can find the document, I'd like to have a link myself. But that the uh, you know I think it's Ireland. They're not. They had to answer to the uh, request. For, uh, for evidence that they had evidence in writing of an isolate for the SARS-CoV-2, the purported cause, the implied presumed cause, not the found cause, of symptoms called COVID-19. As a part of our legal action, we have uh, been demanding the evidence that the virus actually exists, as well as evidence that the lockdowns actually have an impact on the spread of viruses, that face masks are safe and do deter spread of virus that they don't uh, no such studies exist no social distancing is based in science it isn't it's made up the contact tracing has a bearing on the spread of the virus or of course it doesn't the organization here is making up as they go along i'm going to give you the link uh, whether you i don't i couldn't get to it somehow my browsers today would not load any videos even from BitChute. Uh, so i'm not sure what's going on there but at any rate i will give you this link but i want you to pay attention and be cautious I want you to notice what she's doing, in what I consider incorrect. She now has an answer, and she's done essentially what I've asked you all to do, demand evidence of this thing. But the point about that is that that's an answer, not a question, and it doesn't give more questions when you tie it to the duty that they didn't do. When it says there's a duty and obligation to find the isolate, if you will, to find the infectious agent for their symptoms, and they don't have evidence of that, they have agreed and shown that they failed to follow the law. There's no further question. And this is where I, I see that uh, for as much as I want to, I support what they're doing, uh, Gemma O'Doherty misses the boat here. And now she says because they see this, it asks, it uh, allows more questions. They can't, you, you can't go to a legal action with questions. You have to go with the answer. And so them continually answering questions, Asking questions allows the condition condition to continue. And so I want you to notice that they've got what I've told you. They, the governments don't have this, this thing. I told you this back in March. I told you what you need to do. And they could be doing the other remedies I've been telling you instead of making a legal action that asks questions. I'm disappointed. I don't, don't dislike them. I'm not judging them. I'm saying there's a different path. You stop asking questions at some point. Stop being the little child and start asserting that it's absolute crime and show how. They now have the evidence there's no isolate. All they need to do, my thought, their law should show that that was required of a local official. You don't sue on the questions and ongoing questions. You sue the dereliction and the fraud. Fraud paramount. And so I guess my point here is, is it's easy to move in a slightly off target way 
and they'll take the other side takes advantage of every possible answer that they can bring back. They work like boilerplate responses, and you have to know the condition better than they do. And you already do. This is the other question. These people aren't really that cool about all this. They have no clue. There's there's a, a knowledge is they don't have. And as I've been trying to show people, you have to become very fluid and mobile on what you want, what you can do. Not you don't make it up. You go to the rules and you find out what's available. And you just start hitting them in ways they've never thought it happened in a comprehensive manner on subject matter they cannot uh, cannot defend. And you'll they'll start rising up to give you back nonsense, which is perfect because that's what you want. You don't want them really. You don't want to engage a plausibility. You don't want to continue the question. You want to end the question. Anyway, my uh, support to Gemma Odwardi and uh, and their effort, but this is what they the the bar association uses to move this through. Their solicitor that they have to protect them isn't doing any collateral attack. I would use either the both possibly the writ, uh, writ of habeas corpus and uh, injunction against the officers that are do, doing the fraud that they are. And again, this is not just a, oh, the guy behind Woodshed figures this stuff out and sees, oh, let's go test it. This is something I've already done. You attack, collaterally attack that they have a right to do what they're doing. And you know how they did it, how they failed. They all, they're now obligated to show how they could have done it. And they have no sub substance. But if you don't, then they, it's like a waiver, and you waive their, their, you waive to their, even their fraudulent authority. Again, not my rules. It's, that's what the dynamic is. That's what's being used against you. Your silence is your consent. Your failure to properly act. Your knowledge without proper action is a loser. Knowledge is not power. And it's tough enough when you have, have the knowledge properly applied. It's tough enough anyway. And so I'm just helping the people will hear me what I'm saying. This is going to take a, a pretty good effort. And guess what? No one's going to lose blood over it if we do it right. Okay. This is, I guess, the other thing that keeps biting in me to say. We're, I'm trying to figure out that we do this without macho gunmanship. If we do that, I th well, I don't think we're going to succeed, to, first of all, like we did in the last two times. And we're, we're going to be diminished. We're actually acting out as the children. They've they've figured that we are, and they've made us to be, which was no excuse to us. Sadly as that is, that's still there's no excuse to us. So I've got a, quite a few uh, here links now moving. There's no proof moving into some uh, bit shoot videos, and that you can hear her talk, Gemma talk about that. She reads from a document. Uh, again, these are. I'm going to go quick. Although this one, I think I'm going to play for you. It's uh, Judy Mikovits, and she's talking in an interview with Clint Richardson. And I, I was appreciative of of her work. I may have found out that who it was that actually had what I showed you in gen general attack as medical martial law. She may have written in her book, The Plague of Corruption, back in August. She mentioned that in this video. I'm not going to play that part. You can see this. The interview is very between Clint Richardson and Judy Mikovits, very good. I don't know if I like the host. The host destroys this. I don't. Uh, I don't know what to say. Uh, that if you can maybe scroll through that really quickly, took the took the wind completely out of the sails. Partially attacks Clint Richardson on a subject matter that I know he was right on. That uh, that I know that I've told you about Title 50. He was made aware of that. He understands that very well. He was able to address her on the on the international law condition that met her objection and she f just refused to listen to that so that part i'm not so happy with but for clint richardson and judy mikovitz very powerful stuff being stated uh, that i i think you need to hear you you need to listen to i'm going to play now a little bit of the middle a couple of minutes between clint richardson explaining how what this thing does as we saw Herod carry made Mad Day, I, I, not Mad, Mad, Mad Dej, it's Mad Day, I understand that she said her name, Mad Day. Carrie, Dr. Carrie Mad Day was explaining what Dr. Igor Shepard was saying about the way they don't, they've used these uh, synthetic coatings, if you will, covers, technology to inter inject this transfection 
instruction set into cells. Uh, this is where we're picking up the conversation from Clint, and I want you to listen to what Judy Mikovits says is a dynamic relative. I hadn't heard someone explain uh, this meth methylation uh, condition, although I've studied that it was there to do. In fact, it's, when I'm looking at my nutrition, that's how I'm I'm looking at what systems I'm feeding to be able to allow these things. I'm moving into this methylation condition, and she speaks right to it, so maybe I was listening to that a little bit more. But you understand here, I want you to hear how this this thing they're trying to do through this uh, this so-called treatment to to limit your to limit your resp your body's response to infection what it's actually affecting i hadn't heard anybody speak of i want you to hear this i want it on record but anybody can go to the broadcasters and if you ever just click on the links and start studying you'll know uh, hopefully enough to protect yourself and have a word in your mouth about how you then can stop these nonsenses that are being pushed on us because nobody, uh, no one else will. No one's going to protect you. Let me enter into this with Clint Richardson explaining this ability of the synth synthesized coatings to enter into our cells, th that they can change us. They're synthetic. He, I'm agreeing with what he says. He says these are not vaccines, and they're not. These things are experiments, essentially, and they're wicked uh, to an, an, a degree I can't even describe. Here, well, let me play his, and then I want us to listen to uh, Judy Mikovits explain a dy a condition in the body that happens relative to this. They can now just directly shoot programming or technology into artificial synthetic RNA that will reprogram your DNA to express different things. Completely experimental, completely unknown. The company that's making a Moderna has never been approved for any vaccine. They created this company specifically to make this new technology, which is this RNA technological thing that, again, I refuse to call it a vaccine because it's not a vaccine. It's completely correct. different. And, you know, I'd, I'd love for Judy to expand on that. Uh, absolutely correct. And, and you're actually literally in going to these um, fake PCR tests, all the PCR tests detects is that pathogenic piece. It's not a vaccine. You're literally injecting the only toxic part of a of that coronavirus that they fabricated. And worse as you could see if you if you go to if it's still there, freedomplatform.tv forward slash Martin um, from uh, September 16th or so, the week of September 16th of this year, you will see David Martin go in great detail about Moderna saying, oh, we expect the release of one of these viruses, so this is why we get this patent, right along with Tony Fauci. So since 2001, they've been planning, and, and they can't do this technology on humans without creating the fake disease of COVID that has nothing to do with SARS-CoV-2 infection. Clearly, in order to be a causative agent, every person with the agent has to be the has to have the disease and every person who is PCR positive now remember if you're expressing a, a human genome protein that's what syncyt it is it's expressed it's an ancient viral envelope protein and it's expressed in in every human so every human and people with multiple sclerosis express it. People with Parkinson's, people with ME-CFS, people with autism, people blacks, Hispanics, they express it because they can't degrade. Their Pac-Man can't degrade RNA as easily as everybody else. So when you put this synthetic thing in a protected by a synthetic lipid that that activates like um, squalene but not squalene the PEG and the other things in that lipid nanoparticle called an LNP in the in the papers they activate toll receptor 9 which completely dysregulates your methylation machinery so you can't silence onc oncogenes. Your, your tumor suppressor genes get silenced. So everything about gene expression is changed. This doesn't have to integrate in order to Meth cause methylation. Cancer. Methylation being the the coating around the um, around the. Uh, being a methyl group on the on the start site you just mentioned it briefly so the start site of every gene so most of our dna 
is not coding for proteins. It's, it's mRNAs, microRNAs, long chain non coding RNAs that regulate the expression of our DNA in every cell of the body. So now you're injecting something in that LNP part will totally dysregulate the, the every cell of the body because a normal virus only infects the cells with the receptor. So here we'd have the HIV GP120 in this thing. So here it gets to the gain of function as you get to go into T cells, B cells, macrophages, not just ACE2, um, the angiotensin converting enzyme cells. And then you've got syncytin. So every cell of the body and that the expression of that gene is associated with enraging microglia and astrocytes in the brain. So brain disease, trauma, psychosis, um, yeah. autism, everything. And these are the people who are already expressing that. So when they see that gene synthetically, that autoimmune reaction that Kent's talking about, they're going to destroy self. The very basic thing of the, the immune system is what is the difference between self and non-self? So they're going to test PCR positive every single time because stress, you know, changes DNA methylation. They're, they're crippling with the masks. Your glutathione responses, your type 1 interferon starts, you're literally driving the disease. Now you've got everybody heightened, so you're just, oh, they're so fearful of this that they're literally lining up in parking lots to, to kill themselves. No, I, well, they I are it. fearful because they're doing this big propaganda. They're doing a big propaganda campaign. I want to ask another question because, we okay, we've established that this is um, a Bioweapon. They're actually purposely do. I mean, who? Else, why would they do this other than purposely, right? We unless we think that they're that stupid. But you can't be that stupid to create this. So they're doing it on purpose. But my question is, they are really doing a warp speed drive to get everybody vaccinated. Okay, there's New York is putting through a proposal um, in legislation to make it a forced vaccination. Some countries are saying no, you can't force it. Other um, areas are saying, yes, you're going to have to do it. Uh, Canada is wanting to do it. Um, Joe Biden, if he ends up getting into office, he's going to force it. He already wants to force masks for the first 100 days. He's, I just, he's awful. Okay, so my, my question is, how long does it take for people to see the symptoms of it? Is it a delay of maybe a year and a half or a year so they can get through everybody before people start having severe reactions. Because if everybody starts having severe reactions from day one, they're only going to get through a certain percentage and the rest of the population is going to wake up and say, hell no. So is there a delayed reaction? Um, either, want, any, either of you. Well, I'll, I'll uh -huh. say that in the healthy, yes, it'll be the second dose. In the um, 25 million Americans who have um, ret viral associated diseases like chronic Lyme disease, um, Parkinson's disease, um, where the expression multiple sclerosis, Hispanics, blacks, the mentally, I mean, they said the first people to get this are the mentally um, uh, compromised who've been in mental institutions. Why would you do that? That's, uh, that's the autistic. They're considered healthy, except their brain doesn't work. And they're... the black. And so, if you listen to all that, you understand. It. You can go get the link and listen to the rest of it. It's about uh, over two hours long. Very informative between Clint Richardson and uh, Judy Mikovits. She's explaining. If you listen to the condition of the body responding, she's showing us that uh, there's a whole lot more going on behind the scenes, which sets us up for the takedown. As I've said long ago, this is the method. But I wanted, I don't know if you would have thought about what did I think about, what, what word came to mind in this. Uh, remember, this is a gain of function function of the research to make this do this kind of thing. This is a hand of man for your destruction. And what isn't being shown and discussed is the dual use, which is what the, later on in the discussion comes in uh, regard, regarding the Title 50. Uh, where they put it under peacetime, the dual use, they use the peacetime side. That the, the thing that Judy mentioned, Judy Mikovits, Dr. Judy Mikovits mentions, is the dysregulation of your system. It goes, it's systemic and it's dysregulation. What a thought occurred to me 
if we could tie that back through, through the agency of the law, through the law that's being also disregarded, but also show that every mitigation utilizing vaccines is causing a dysregulation, there may be a place to be discussing, asserting that the agency has no right of dysregulation at all. Its job, its duty as an agency is to regulate. And so this is a little bit of a twist on what she's saying in an attempt to try and in- interfere and cause a challenge to this idea that these people can do anything. And it's an off uh, offhanded attack, offside attack. You say, wait a minute, you're trying to dysregulate people. And your job is to regulate the orderly stopping of a virus, not continuous not to invade the body through a dysregulation. And so on the top of this, the initial part for for everybody is understand this is, as Clint opens up the discussion, it's not a vaccine. It's it's some experiment, and you're a part of it. Dr. Judy Mikovits also mentions how you will be throwing positives. I want to go touch a little bit of that. Last week, I didn't get to this, and I didn't put it on my tabs, but it did get posted. I think Cowboy Tech uh, put up a link to this, and so I kind of I was holding it out because I'm a little bit unsure about it. Uh, bombshell, who, uh, who, not, not the rock group or the owl, but the WHO, coronavirus PCR test primer sequence is found in all human DNA. Now, this is, is important. This is very interesting that one of the primers, and there's two, there's a forward primer and a reverse primer, using complements of your DNA strands, it's RNA, that makes the hybrid DNA, okay? So this is the other problem that's, that Judy was talking, Dr. Judy Mikovich was talking to. You're not being explained the dynamic here, and I'm not totally sure about these primers. However, they are used to set up the test for the PCR. It has been found that one of the sequences of the primers is used for the PCR that the WHO advances has a direct human genome component to it, which explains at least in part how it would show positive because you're isolating that test down to combining in certain ways what i've okay so that's i wanted to present that i think it's very important to understand there's a document that i also tracked down i think through the article that shows the who making that statement and there's an nhi document that you'll get a link to that shows that that sequence being listed that the nhi knows about And so there's an integration, again, of these so-called appropriate foreign medical experts, foreign relative to your local authority and official who's supposed to find this stuff. They're setting them up for a takedown, and they've already been put in by the rules, at least in one state, that this is appropriate. And no one said anything. Well, up until this last lawsuit in Tennessee, and I've been asking people to start to look for that for themselves, because in equity, you have a reformation a reformation that a judge can do if they intend to do justice. And it's a, if you may laugh, but that's another test. See, if you, there's a reformation that has to happen, they won't. You just exposed a, a failure of equity, a failure of justice, that justice would be done. And this is as important as moving your, your position forward and prevailing is to show whether or not it was a complete justice. Moving here, bombshell, who vote coronavirus has a primer, the primer which focuses the PCR test to amplify certain, multiply certain uh, genome strings, has been found to have the human genome, which would, on its face, would say that this would show positive most of the time, and almost why it's programmed. I said it's designed to be positive. I'm not so sure about that. So I'm going to only offer this as information. Those of you that have some time can look at this. There's another primer that comes into this, and I'm not sure what the dynamic is there. I've included a link to explaining, um, a do, uh, some biologists explaining how the pe- the primer is done. She's doing a write-out on how the complements work in this and how you determine these things. They're made up. They're made up and they're a guess. And understand for all that, this is all not set. The science is not settled on how you set up a primer. And then I'm a questioning, because there's two of them, what does the ultimate result happen? So I'm a little bit hesitant to just say, here, here this shows, oh, the bombshell is they use DNA, human DNA. We would have to understand where they're using that and for what reason. There's many reasons to use a, a PCR. And so uh, I'm going to offer it anyway because we need to have this knowledge. I'm going to throw it in there. I'm going to show you the, the link over to discussing what the protocol for the uh, R- real-time RT-PCR assay is relative to the 
the, 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 the who, not the rock group, but the all again, and the link to the Homo sapiens chromosome 8 the primary assembly where they show the genomic orientation which is used to create the primer complements in their, when they work forward and reverse together to br create the synthesized DNA, taking on the, the RNA and the synthetic, the synthetic instruction, the modeled instruction. See, this is not real stuff. It, it could exist, but it's not natural. And this is where you get into the synthetic. This is not natural. And so I'm not, I'm getting to the point where I'm starting to realizing I'm not, I'm not against vaccines. I'm against being not natural. And this stuff is just beyond not, not natural. This is really evil stuff. And I really appreciated Ju Judy Mikovitz's discussion about the inner workings of what it's going after and how. And in a way, I, as I heard that, I hope you heard it a bit. She's showing you that where we need to fortify our, our nutrition. To make sure that's that's in a way to maybe combat some of this and keep up with it if, if we do get hit, if we do choose to do it, or if not, if we get forced into it, and now we're gonna we don't know how much time we have left to to kind of get go after it because now they've harmed you in, in your bodily integrity. And uh, as uh, we find one of the videos that I forgot to mention as I pass through is Clint Richardson's new documentary, The Lethal Injection Part Two: Corruption of Blood. And I want you to realize, as I've said it before, and I've been holding back talking about this because I didn't want to rain on, on that title, but corruption of blood is what they're not supposed to do in the Constitution. So not, and this was a little slightly different corruption of blood, but it works the same way. And that was only on people that were really charged with an infamous crime or treason. Here they're doing this corruption of blood where you're not even charged. You're just assumed to be guilty. You're not innocent. And this asymptomatic word... It's just another word for the word being healthy. And so they've now, you don't, maybe don't realize that they've caused, defamed your innocence by saying you're asymptomatic when that's all that's saying is, but you're healthy. And so when you learn to change these words, COVID means fraud, fraud 19, asymptomatic means healthy, and you start replacing these words like code words, you start to see a different statement. And it gives you, if you, if you can read that way, it should empower you to be able to apply this when someone tries to come and force you, and you have a, a much greater thing to say and to assert against the fraud. You assert the fraud, and then you show where they violated the law, and then you put that on them, and then you, you hit them for the due process, and you do what you can. You do everything you can in order to throw the obstacles in front and hope that's enough to, uh, to persuade someone not to continue or gives you the setup and the record to be able to avoid and continue to avoid. As long as you make an administrative pressure on these things that they're not really, they have no authority, and your habeas corpus should come right in to be able to say that. They're not ripe. They didn't find uh, the infectious agent, so they couldn't find that I'm a vector, and asymptomatic it can never be a problem because their jurisdiction is only over the sick. They've used that asymptomatic as a fraudulent defamation of my innocence. And then you get over to the susceptibility condition and you get into the natural body's immune system, which they're attempting to invade. And I want to bring up this, and it hasn't been brought up too much. I've heard it just recently. I've talked about it before. These novel things that change your DNA become novel DNA, no different than Monsatan uh, had the courts agree for it, that when it has a pollution uh, from its seed over into a, a, a trespass as a different property owner that didn't want it, they owe Monsatan for the use of their patent is what's going on here as well. If they get the RNA to bind up and hybridize in your cells and, it, and they can show that it's there, they have a possession on that novel uh, invasion. And the courts have already, I told you this at the time, the courts were being or giving these people this power ahead of time in the future. And so remember, that's another liability when you go to take uh, this new, these new types of vaccines, which are not vaccines. These are I don't know what more. These are just maybe leashes. They're technical leashes of, of possession that you consent to through your genetic makeup. Uh, who deletes naturally acquired immunity from its website? Uh, an article from Jeffrey Tucker. Uh, Jeffrey Tucker's on this. I, I wish he would bring his forward what he sees more like what I'm saying. He's exposing to us the fact, as I think came through a few, a few places, the, the WHO is moving the goalpost again. This is the, the earmark of someone committing fraud and crime. 
and this is what needs to be stopped and locked down. And he writes, maybe you have some sense of something fishy going on? Same. It's not one thing, it's another. Coronavirus lived on surfaces until it didn't. Masks didn't work until they did. Then they did not. There is asymptomatic transmission, except there isn't. Lockdowns work to control virus, except they do not. do not. All these people are sick without symptoms until, whoops, PCR tests are wildly inaccurate because they were never intended to be diagnostic tools. Everyone is in danger of the virus, except they aren't. It spreads in schools, except it doesn't. And this is the starting of a discussion you can actually write down and you get ready to show that there's a fraud going on. And the reason that this is allowed to be this way is because they didn't do the very first step, which is to identify what the heck they're looking at. And what I'm saying it that way is you don't want to get into arguing whether or not they have a right to some extent to do any treatment. Because if they do, they've already won the day on the record that says everything they're doing is, comes with a risk, and that's not something that they have to deal with. They can be made immune of that unacceptable but necessary risk. In other words, it's not safe. It's what you heard the court say, we'll have some links for that, unavoidably unsafe. It still says it's unsafe. Legalism would say, oh, that doesn't mean much. It doesn't mean it's dangerous. If you want to believe that, then maybe we have more bridges to sell. But this is the, this is the legalism. Jeffrey Tucker goes on to point out that the WHO, on all this ambiguity and, and misconstruction, now pulls back what it means in order to be what immunity is, what it can be, what it relates to, by removing some very interesting dialogue. Uh, you Again, you need to read how the WHO, which is deemed to be an appropriate medical expert, has flipped virology on its head as they move the goalpost and make it impossible to, well, they don't make it impossible. By their doing it, they expose themselves as the criminals. You need to be there to catch that. You need to be able to speak like I see Jeffrey Tucker being able to, but in a, an applied way, not just in the knowledge of it, not in watching, the witnessing the, the nonsense of it all. He loads, he'll lay out the, how they did what they've done. It was my first exposure to that it even happened before. I think about, about a week ago it came out. I can't remember. I can't remember when I get this stuff now, but uh, this, is what the, this is what the fraudsters do, and this is how you catch them. You catch them right when they do it, and they're, they're, will tell you that this is, has nothing to do with the virus. In fact, that, that uh, report, or the, the complaint, the petition in Tennessee explains all this as well. They did, that was explained back, what, in October. All this stuff was laid out in, in a very uh, short manner, uh, even though the other side, the uh, attorneys are complaining at its length. It's a very, a very short complaint. But this correlated as well, and I think I also got this from uh, Gary L. This correlated with a reminder and I talked. I think I talked about this with the federal ban on making lethal viruses being lifted, and the money that wasn't going to be was going to be now made available in 2017. Uh, Gary reminded me of this thing that I remembered. I thought I remember talking about it, and I said, "What? Watch out! This is now going to move this agenda along." Well, it looks like now, in hindsight, they'd really never stop this machine. They just stopped funding it, and we see how quickly it came onto the scene by three years later. So. A reminder here of what we were told ahead was the federal government was withholding, and then they opened the floodgate, and it didn't take them long to get what we have here. This thought of the federal government doing this stuff to its people, this thought that the international influence comes in, the CDC allows it all, the local jurisdictions allow it, somehow triggered a thought about Holmador. Holmador, it was where the Ukrainian people were starved out. In fact, that's what that means. It was a murder by starvation. It's been characterized as a genocide. There's been a big resistance internationally relative to that. That the idea that a government will come in and take you out, or a foreign government will invade and take you out, uh, just brought this idea came up to me. And I, I want to bring this forward because just going to the wiki, it was very uh, instructive on, on looking at how the international, the governments amongst themselves, will agree to these atrocities because the words they use to soften, to, to hold up some political agreement that they've got, that they will, ultimately you look at this and you see that it does, the glow, you see this everywhere. The governments are, are given license to kill people. 
the holomador, I mean, is, is looking at the whole of Holocaust as well. In fact, there's a, a debate now to see who, if, 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 who's going to be able to use this motor. To me, I'm looking at millions upon millions of people being killed by government. And there's no thought about it, and there's no remedy to it. That if folks, if you if you haven't seen the attack on you, and how they starved you immediately, your store your store started to run out of things. The localization of the associations around food were telling farmers to destroy food. Remember the potatoes and the milk and all the dairy stuff? Yeah, all that looked just like this holomador in my mind. That these people that we're dealing with. The Fed's lifting this. You see their integration. You watched immediately like Nashville and the explosion. Uh, the integration of the moneyed interest, the protection, the, the establishment of the improvement of infrastructure to keep you oppressed is written all through this. That when you read the, the Holomador wiki and you read through the standard, that when, a, when they come after your culture and your nationality, it's considered genocide. When you look at what happened this summer in the United States allowing the nationality to be questioned when they allowed a tax to come in. They allowed your election system to be destroyed. And early on, they were taking down the evidence of your culture. All these things started to play this weekend when I just came to this thought about this is just like that, just in different action. That the government you're, you're supposedly think is going to be there to protect you and, and whatever, and even if you think that's a joke and they're not and you know that, they're still there to move the agenda forward that they want. Even this is not even international. It's the enemy from within. The reading this Holomador wiki really exposed a whole lot of things in how governments go about using words in order to, if you will, agree or justify to some extent to what's going on that you're seeing that COVID is doing. And so I want to quickly read a something that uh, the House of Representatives put together as they call a sense. In 2003, so this is not just happening now. This is a, an acknowledgement of what happened in Ukraine. And the Soviet, when, it, when the word genocide came out, which it, it was invented for the position, it was a political statement to make an attention, the Russians came out and just would not agree to that. They had to you know, do the fancy pants dance. And so you see that the government, and when you see the answer, it really disgusted me. But what, as much as I appreciate what Putin d is doing in Russia to keep his nation together and move forward and all that other stuff. I do not trust that system. And I got that from his talking to a, a British expat moved into Russia, married a white Russian wife, and he was complaining about not getting enough money for his kids to go to college, and he's a dairy farmer. And push it, Putin, after his complaint, Putin, Putin just said, well, be happy you're getting that much. And keep making your milk, essentially. Was this whole idea of being told what to do and you choose to do to support the state and you have no independent rights, you have no independent situation, you're controlled by the outside on what you can provide for yourself and uh, that they can, the governments that are there, take away your power. You allow your power to be moved away from being able to protect yourself. But this House of Resolution Representatives discussion uh, says, in talking to the Holomador, goes through and mentions uh, certain things which I think are relevant today with the COVID and the attack. I told you this is an attack, and you can start to pull out by these examples uh, where they say, whereas the 2003 marks the 70th, 70th anniversary of the height of the famine in Ukraine that was deliberately initiated and enforced by the Soviet regime through a seizure of grain and the blockade of food shipments into affected areas, as well as by forcibly preventing the starve starving population from leaving the region for the purposes of eliminating resistance to the forced collectivization of agriculture and destroying Ukraine's national identity. Let me stop for a moment. If you heard the word forced collectivization and don't see that your agreement to stay in your house prisons and not be outside doing what you have right to do isn't not as agreeable to this sense that they get you to agree so they don't have to force you to the collectivization they want to impose. Then you will read inside, you'll start to see in this document that the United States government is doing to you what they tried to protect the Ukraines from there 
in allowing you to consent to the forced collectiviz- the unforced collectivization and destroying your agriculture as you will just relate that to substance the produ- the produce the product to your stores and destroying your national identity putting question and doubt in your systems and your institutions and your law and your statues essentially that give you memory not just for how bad it was or to exalt somebody that may look bad but to remind you of how bad it was so that you don't do it again you're looking at the globalization of your nation the destruction of a national identity and i'm saying that national identity isn't so so removed so much removed that it, it removes itself from your right to be have property be property be protected in that property be secured in that property not not secured as property like some load on a truck no you are to be secured in your property to be free from all of this and that you haven't moved forward really speaks to this first paragraph they're only talking to forced collectivization your consent allows the united states government to do collectivization without the force and so free and slave you put down government equals force it can but it's not right now they're getting you all to do this and they're and you're doing it just in line with what i saw done in holomador on the force side they're getting you now they've got us wired now that we're going to do it to ourselves whereas the man-made famine resulted in the deaths of at least five million men women and children in ukraine and an estimated 1.2 million people in other regions man-made famine let's say man-made disaster let's say man-made covid resulting in deaths okay do i hear a difference in that statement than what's happening today i don't i don't when you just change some of the words out we can fit this sense of of the rep house of representatives into the construction of today that the united states government and every jurisdiction and county and state county government has allowed exactly this just in certain different terms the same uh, the same deed is being remember Libra code number one article one the deed you know them by their how that you know them by what they by what you see them do whereas the famine took place in, in the most productive agriculture area of the former soviet union while food stocks throughout the country made sufficient to prevent famine and while the so- soviet re- regime continued to export large quantities of grain they told you you had nothing and yet government uh, uh, businesses kept going farms kept going they subsidized in the united states whereas in all other western nations wh- whereas the western observers of the first hand knowledge of the famine including new york times respondents walter duranty who was award- awarded the pulitzer prize winner in his report of the soviet from the soviet union knowingly and deliberately falsified their reports to cover up and refute evidence of the famine in order to suppress criticism of the soviet regime isn't that the news or the media the mainstream media twitter facebook isn't that all the media the social networks the same thing i i don't see a difference myself i don't know about you i guess we could have differing minds but anyway whereas western observers uh, then scholars who reported accurately in the existence of the famine were subjected to disparagement and criticism in the west for their reporting of the famine is that uh, censorship from youtube sound familiar now folks how about you how about twitter how about the anticipation of the purge campaigns is that what we're looking at here i don't see a difference myself this is the united states house of representatives making a sense of what they thought ukraine was about and they're describing exactly what's happening during covid that they're agreeing to it happen and law happen why because you're agreeing to it in your silence they're not forcing a thing here Whereas the Soviet regime and many scholars in the West continue to deny the existence of the famine until the collapse of the Soviet regime in 1991 resulted in many of its archives being made accessible, thereby making possible the documentation of the premeditated nature of the famine and its harsh enforcement. Isn't that every one of us that's just keeping together the information to try and show others that we learned the United States knew in the past that it took time to get the, the information together? the proof that we have already in our hands that they're trying to get rid of now and we're standing for this whereas the final report of the United States government's commission of Ukraine famine established December 13, 1985 and concluded the victims were starved to death in a man-made famine and the Joseph Stalin and them around him committed genocide against Ukrainians in 1930 1932 to 33 Is this a man-made COVID and it killing people? 
and the government's doing it, and every jurisdiction's allowing it, I don't see as a difference. Whereas, although the Ukraine famine was one of the greatest losses of human life in the 20th century, it remains insufficiently known in the United States and in the world, now therefore be it. And you think that was because of what? Because the media lied, the media covered up, didn't disclose. Those that spoke out, they destroyed or tried to destroy. And here we're doing our best to try and stay viable. You think maybe that's why no one knew? But is it even worse today? We see even when you know, people will stay ignorant whether that's willful or just because they have no capacity, I don't know. But I don't know why. what I heard and read there from 2003 after 9-11 that was any different than what they're doing in COVID today, the United States government itself to its own people. And this would be every Western government. Resolve the sense of the, you know, house, the, sense of, the house of Representatives that the millions of victims of the man-made famine and the, that occurred in the Ukraine in 1932-33 should be solemnly remembered and honored in the, nine, in the 70th year marking the height of the famine. That's all you'll be, folks. Just remembered, if you remembered, this man-made famine was designed and implemented by the Soviet regime as a deliberate act of terror and a mass murder against Ukrainian people. Soviet regime, if you look at there, you have no law and no property, you're at least in Soviet, if not communism, if not worse, communitarianism already, when your courts are not upholding law. Through the man-made disaster called COVID-19, where every duty was upon the officials to not allow it, is a deliberate act of terror and mass murder, as the sense of the United States, House of Representatives in 2003 was against a very similar thing to the Ukraine people. The decision of the, United States, of the government of Ukraine and the Verko, Verkhovna Rada, the Ukrainian parliament, to give official recognition to the famine and its victims, as well as their efforts to secure greater international awareness and understanding of the famine, should be supported. And yet they will not support anybody who has been speaking out to expose the truth, even the questions about this, and we see how we are not treated the same even within our own borders. should not be okay with a truly free people or free-minded people. And we shouldn't be arguing amongst ourselves about this any further, uh, uh, as an aside. Uh, four, the official recognition of the famine by the government of Ukraine and the Ver Ver Verkhovna Rada represents a significant step in the reestablishment of Ukraine's national identity, identity, the elimination of the legacy of Soviet dictatorship, and the advancement of the of efforts to establish a democratic and free Ukraine that is fully integrated into Western community of nations. Isn't that what we're waiting for, that the United States government recognize the actual national identity of the people it was to serve and stop its own attack on its people, which you know is not going to happen? You think the military stepped up to stop the very same thing within the, the gates of the United States of America? No, they're part of Operation Warp Speed to come bring what you heard Dr. Judy Mikovits bring upon what Clint Richardson says is not a vaccine into your veins and into changing you for who knows what reason other than we can surmise eugenics would be right on the top end of it and also just to get a more compliant dysfunctional society and this is what was uh, the sense of the of the house of representatives in 2003 what we're experiencing i told you again in 2020 operation hindsight 2020 would you notice would your experience and witness tell you enough and I'm still waiting myself. I was here to at least advance it forward. Been doing this all year. Uh, that we are sitting as, as Holomador in some regard. In many different fronts. Not just the food. They got you fed. But then they show in the political connection. And so I've told you that was before. They've learned to make sure that you're fed enough. While you're fed enough, you'll be, com you'll be content. And they will then get their way because you didn't resist. And I don't mean resist because you said so. I mean properly take action with knowledge of how they've done it to you and how to stop them. I offer a couple of ways on how to do that. I don't, well, lots of only ones I can come up with at this point without any integration with anybody else uh, with their expertise. And so that's what I have to tell people until I know better. Right now it hasn't been explained that I that it's insufficient and nobody has really stepped up in order to impart their demand on being 
treated as someone that's free instead of someone that's going to be pursue, presumed to be not forcibly brought into collectivism. Now, here's the WHO speaking to this condition where until someone defined it, it really wasn't the sense of anybody. It's senseless. That we hear now the moving of the goalposts from this Dr. Tedros, who's just a philosopher guy. He's not a medical doctor. He's a part. He's the head of the director or something of the WHO. Uh, where you hear him tell you about what they're, he's trying to clarify that herd immunity is a concept only out of out of vaccination. But I want to play just a, a, a minute here, and I want you to get a sense of what he's going to say at the very end of this thing. I want to point out something about how you see the fraud, how you can discern the fraud, and, and see these people mean you harm. There has been some discussion recently about the concept of reaching so-called herd immunity by letting the virus spread. Herd immunity is a concept used for vaccination in which a population can be protected from a certain virus if a threshold of vaccination is reached. For example, herd immunity against measles requires about 95% of a population to be vaccinated. The remaining 5% will be protected by the fact that measles will not spread among those who are vaccinated. In other words, herd immunity is achieved by protecting people from a virus, not by exposing them to it. Right, you heard what the man said. You heard that it's not supposed to be exposing you to. The vaccination is supposed to not expose you to a certain thing. Let me move over to another document from the WHO, from their, not the Rock Group or the OWL, the World Health Organization, that says health is a political choice. And I want you to say the word political. Political is policy uh, in these times, uh, these administrative times. And I want to know whether or not they asked you whether or not your health is a policy choice of whomever, or is it a right that you have to maintain, uh, whether or not you want to, I mean, health is not given to everybody necessarily as an, in, an inalienable right, but to maintain our health is not a political question, that the who, these guys right here, who move the goalposts, is now imposing that health is only a political choice, but that it is at all a political choice. I have the document you can read, uh, the psychopaths, uh, what they do and how they move the stuff around, that he makes the comment that these vaccines are not supposed to, are supposed to protect you from it, not give you the illness, if you will, whatever it is, right? And so, I want to point out, I wrote up a couple of Twitters. Herd immunity is achieved by protecting people from a virus, not by exposing them to it. And then I reference on the Twitter, a CDC post-authorization licensure safety monitoring of COVID-19 vax under page 31 on the VAERs, AEs, the adverse events of special interest, exposing people to that the, vi the vaccines, the licensure allowances for the CDC expose people to COVID-19 disease. I talked to you about that last week, which is an interesting that this pops up. The vaccine, so-called, this thing that's an experiment, actually exposes you to the thing they claim that they're stopping. Is in direct contradiction to what he just said that this is supposed to be done. And I offer another tweet says, you may be interested in the suit explaining why this is. Guessing can't stop what isn't or can't be identified. There is no test. And then I refer to the governor there in, in Tennessee. Lee admitted to a, in a petition a motion to dismiss because he's not subject to any law. No remedy stops his disaster. The same thing as the WHO is asserting now. There's nothing that you can do to stop them. In fact, there is everything you get to do. They're a foreigner, and they don't actually have medical expertise. They throw it on their head. And what if you're not relevant to vaccination? What if your health is not political and not subject to their policy? What if that law is already explained and it's not subject to change? What if you, as I told you before, the, even the United States government has acknowledged the state, the power to determine these things, and only upon communicable sources of contagion, not everybody. And why aren't you limiting that by stating that? Why are you not forced into your collectivism? And I have the document again from last week, the preliminary list, with mess sense says that when you, this vaccine could give you uh, COVID-19 disease. Okay, so it's, it has completely 
counter to what the gentleman just said, just like it's counter, reality is counter to everything these psychopath criminals uh, come up with. Now, we want to touch a little bit here about the safety issue. Again, the moving goalpost. What is an unavoidably unsafe product? You need to understand what this is. The, the government will impose this upon you because it's the only thing they have. What you have to read into this, I have a case here. It's called uh, the Bruce, is it Bruce, uh, Bruce Witz versus Wyeth LLC. It discusses what this thing called unavoidably unsafe is. And if you look very carefully, you'll see that there's a risk management function that I've been telling you about, how you respond to that part. Once, if they can get past the fact they've been derelict in the law, you then hit them with the the risk factors that they've had and how, without looking at your susceptibility, how you could be a risk, but how their impositions, which you now see are going to affect you as a make you a novel product to a private corporation, which they certainly don't have the right to do, and a whole lot of other reasons. How have they figured out that what is unavoidably unsafe can't be met by another means? And this is where we get to the fact when they also state this is only for symptoms. This doesn't cure this stuff. In fact, now you see it, the, the who agrees they're not supposed to give you that, which this new experimental stuff will and can give you, notwithstanding the death it can cause, that you have something to say against the even the unavoidably unsafe. You have to understand this concept. They'll tell you this is not dangerous. This is to us. This is a psychopath's discussion. I don't want anything that's unavoidably unsafe unless I am looking at death's door. And I told you not that it was unavoidably unsafe. If I wasn't for antibiotics, I wouldn't be here today. I got something in my blood. I fought it. The, I fought the good fight for two and a half weeks. I lasted probably two and a half, two weeks longer than anybody else that the doctor had seen me. If it wasn't for those antibiotics, I would have been dead. And so there's a place for everything. That's, I was looking at the certain death versus what this thing, this antibiotic might do. In that case, I didn't, wasn't looking at the things that an experimental RNA hybrid uh, DNA combination of symptom relief would do, where NyQuil may not be better. When you understand what I'm telling you here, you use these links, you start understanding the dialogue, you then can assert better a challenge even once they break down the door of authority and they even given that authority, then you can still give an argument as to the limit. You still always use the innocence that they've they're told you that you that somehow they've mischaracterized, fraudulently characterized that asymptomatic happens to be health, and they're calling it something within their jurisdiction, which is not. So you speak jurisdictionally. Judge opens door to a late night bars at a time when COVID-19 is raging. See, it doesn't matter about the so-called numbers and cases; those are all a fraud too. The courts are there with the properly uh, inside, in where they where they don't challenge again; they wrongly challenge. But there is no authority. Once you get them inside the, that they have an authority, you still challenge uh, this extension of that authority. And we have a court case here where that's possible. It's like the California case, but a little bit different. A study investigates, uh, moving on here quickly, investigates effects of a COVID-19 vaccine on male fertility. We've been talking about the sterility condition. Now there's a study. They come after the fact to start exposing this at the same time. You need to read this. All you guys remember I was telling you males are now pregnant? Yeah, well, they're going to go after you so you can't do that anymore. It's all here to see uh, if you are willing to do look, and then you need to protect yourself. Grimner, thank you for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. Appreciate all you do there to keep us, uh, keep people have an ability to get the archives. Uh, folks that are doing mirroring and all your uh, other things, thank you very much for what you do. Your comments, your thumbs up, your thumbs down. Thank you for participating. Let's get the word out. Let's protect ourselves, get a better understanding. I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature will. that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose.
Opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. <laughs>